Hey friends, so today I created a tutorial on how to import point cloud into Blender and how to actually use them with geometry nodes, with shader nodes and more to create awesome rendering and visualization, for example, to do some kind of routing extraction scenarios. So why do I do that? I figured out that it's pretty hard to actually find any uh, resourceful solution to do that with Blender and Blender is a magnificent piece of software that can do that and much more. But having the ability to import point cloud directly within Blender will give us a tremendous amount of possibilities that can target, for example, reality capture to uh, virtual environment creations or actually uh, creating amazing uh, rendering that you will be alone at handling elements like this. And of course, to get started on that, it's good to know exactly what is the simplest way to have point cloud in Blender and how to use them. So what I designed here is very simple. We'll go through nine main steps. And for each of the steps that you can see here, I will go through all the hands-on aspects to show you exactly how I do it, knowing that my um, OS right now is Windows because most of you out there are using Windows, but the same applies if you're using Linux or Mac OS. Okay, so whenever you're ready, let's get our hands dirty. So here, the first step is actually to download Blender and already here there are some recommendations to do. So here I go to blender.org and you go on to the download section and you download Blender 3.6 point something. Um, from my side I use 3.6.4 but anything about 3.6 will work. Under that there are ways to import point clouds. I actually struggled a lot to do it. It's feasible but I do not recommend it. So if you have the ability, which normally you should have, get the version 3.6 and above. You choose the installer that you want, either Windows, Mac OS or Linux, you download it, you install it, and that's it. That's the first step, setting up the Blender environment. Before launching Blender, we will now go on to step two, which is actually point cloud pre-processing. So for this specific um, Blender import, I share with you this magnificent point cloud that I captured with my friends Roman Roboic. Uh, we were on a trip and um, we wanted to explore how we could combine terrestrial laser scanning with photogrammetry and we went into this abandoned Hull factory uh, in Belgium and we actually made a 3D model out of it or a 3D point cloud out of it. So that is the point cloud. What you see here, there are a lot of colors because actually I um, automatically segment it. So identifying some group of points that uh, makes sense, which allowed me then to separate this point cloud into uh, various elements of interest. So why do I do that? Well, I wanted to bring something of interest to you uh, to, 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 to make a sort of scenario, right? And the scenario here is that you will have an artifact that is located within this factory and we would like to retrieve it. And to retrieve it, we want to have the best routing possible. And for doing that, we will use Blender to uh, showcase the element. And the element, the dangerous artifact that we want to retrieve is this one. So for a team to go on site, they need to have a clear understanding about what is the best path, how to relatively position themselves to the object and overall. So making kind of a map and Blender is very really good to do just that. And that's what we're going to do. So the pre-processing stage here, I actually make the heavy lifting for you. I just made sure to separate the point cloud into the ground, uh, the walls, uh, the artifacts, the chairs, some elements uh, of importance, and I use my segmentation for that. But if you do not want to go through there, you see that I also share all these elements. So there's nine elements are actually all the point clouds from this one that were separated for you. For now, you know that exists, but we will first use the full color point cloud, which if I put the color information looks like this, it's really nice. But with Blender, of course, we'll make it look much nicer. So that was step two, uh, 3D point cloud pre-processing. Knowing that you have all that, now we will go on to step three, which is actually importing point cloud into Blender. How do we do that? So the first element is you execute Blender. So I go at Blender 3.6. So when you open Blender, you have something looking a bit like this. It's normal that it's a bit different because I customized uh, my basic project. So when it opens, it opens with something else. All right, so we will import the point cloud for now. I will go through the UI a bit later. But basically, you have a cube element. We do not need that. So I select it and I delete it. Then I go into File, File, Import and Stanford PLY Experimental. There is also the Stanford PLY but for the point clouds, we want also to read the color information, which this specific piece of import uh, statement will allow us 
not STL experimental, it stands for peer while experimental. Then I, I go on to my data, I take my point cloud, you see that it's 500 megabytes, and I just leave everything like it is and I import it. And what is beautiful is that it actually loads the full point cloud pretty quickly. It's arranged because it's selected. So for now, you already have your point cloud, which is loaded, and it's time for us to move to have the UI a bit nicer. So step four is playing a bit with the Blender UI. So you have the ability to actually move this element which are called areas. So area one, two, three, and four, for example. Um, this is the main 3D videos. You can also use that if you want to have orthographic views. So from a top view, that would be orthographic, right? But me, before moving on to the specific details, it's nice to have a different window. So the first thing that I do is here, I want to have what we call the geometry node editor. Then here, for now, I will close this area. Oh, sorry. It's okay. To create an area, you can just go until this little cross appears and you drag and drop just like this. So in here, I want to have the geometry node editor. Then I will do it exactly like this. And here I want to have the shader editor. And another thing that is nice is to split here, that's the properties panel, and instead of the properties, you could have, for example, text editor, and then you split it this way, and I put the Python console. Why? Because then the after, um, in the next episode, I will show you how you can use Python, for example, to code things. We are set up to have a very nice way to handle our um, UI. One other thing that I want to show you is changing from the properties to go to the spreadsheet. Why? Because then when you select your element, you see that for now it's imp imported as a mesh object uh, with 16 million vertex, and you see that the vertex have some properties. And that is interesting, but to handle point cloud into um, Blender, then we want to transform this mesh into a point cloud object. So how do we do that? The first thing is you go onto selecting your point cloud and we will create geometry nodes for 3D shapes. So here, once my point cloud is selected, I click on new in my windows of the geometry um, nodes and I will add one node which is actually mesh um, operations mesh to points and I will put that more or less in the middle, right? And already what you can see is that it instantiates all the vertices and it created an object point cloud which is really nice and now you have the point cloud and you have an extra parameter which is the radius as you can see it's, uh, five centimeter that's a bit big let's put it to two centimeter and you will see that it adjusts the size of the point if we want to go a bit lower we could i will put them one centimeter so that we can see all the points that we have okay so at this stage we already have our point cloud really nicely handled with geometry nodes. Now we go on to step six, which is actually creating a shader node so that we um, handle each of these little points with some kind of material. So there is the geometry and the geometry need to be attached with some kind of materials because, and as um, I will show you just right now, you have the ability to showcase your 3D scenes uh, with various ways. So either viewport shading, uh, solid rendering, then uh, you can have this method to display uh, rendered. And if I click on rendered, everything is black, which is perfectly normal. Or you have some kind of element. This is because I already adjusted my light condition, but in your case, you will have nothing. Okay, so that's very good. Now let's move on to the shader node. So we will create a material, right? that stem from the color information that we have. So here, same thing, I'm in shader area and I create a new shader, which will be called material 002. It's fine, I have already one, because again, I cheated as creating something and we will add an attribute um, called just attribute. I type attribute and we put it here, not color attribute. And the output from this will go as the base color. And now, which attribute we want is the color attribute. So nothing will change at this stage, right? Which is perfectly normal. Uh, we need to add a material node to um, set material, sorry, set material node to a geometry nodes graph exactly here. And we need to select it in our list of new material. And here it's material two. So I will use material two. And here we are almost all set the next stage to have the rendering happening because the material will handle how the light is reflected and what are the real properties with that, we need to set up our light somewhere. So um, 
As you can see, if I click on my light, it's already at a nice place. But in your case, if it's not the case, you just select your light, you go onto this little icon move, and you put it wherever you would like to have it. So what I will do is um, I duplicate this element, I guess, copy and paste data block. So you have light one, right? And I will move it. So now we have two lights. Another thing is, of course, there's lights element. So if I go again onto properties, which is here, you see that they have uh, some kind of elements in the data, how much power they have, the radius, the max balance, and all of this, you can adjust also what kind of uh, type of light you want to have, which is pretty handy. So now that I have my uh, lightning set up, what I can do is, so I have two lights, right? So there is one thing that I need to tell you is that you actually need to set a, another rendering engine to make sure you can handle point cloud elements. By default, whenever you go into properties, so edit type and render, you have a rendering engine called Heavy. What you want is to use cycles. Why? Heavy, if I click then on the rendering option, nothing displays, right? Uh, but you have your geometry. What you need to do is go there and choose cycles. And whenever you do that, if you go into the rendering, then you will have your point cloud. I will not um, tease more. The last thing that you need to do is to change your time limit to 30 seconds so that whenever you create a true rendering, it will not take too long to uh, generate something that you can save and export. All right? And if I go now into rendering phase, you will see that finally we have our, our colors. That is pretty nice. And another thing is if I take the light and I move it around, you actually see that you have something happening. So if I deactivate this light in the rendering uh, side or here, and if I were to move this light around, you can see what happens. So if I put this light here, for example, you see that you have a different scene. Um, so it's pretty nice, right? So at this stage, you have your point cloud, which is imported. You handled pretty much everything um, with the lighting condition. The next stage, of course, is to define um, a storyboard. So as I said, it would be nice to give a map to people to enter and to um, extract the element, which is pretty interesting for us. So for that, I will go back to the solid view. I can go uh, from a top view, pressing on the Z, and I could define exactly the way that I would like them to have. For that, you can go on to add, grease pencil and you can add a um, blank grease pencil then you can go into draw mode and into draw mode you can choose pretty much everything you want here so for now uh, radius i will put it at 50 maybe right i will let it green and now i will define my path so it's normal that you see nothing because it draws below it's more or less which route i want them to have so now I will go back to object mode. And as you can see, this is my path. So the next stage that we have is to actually move our path at the right position. And if we will go inside, that's what you will have, right? So the extraction path. Uh, and people will see it much clear clearly where they need to go uh, to extract uh, this specific object of interest. I went a bit far here, but you could adjust uh, this element. Now, if we were to uh, highlight a bit more this object what you could do is add a um, uh, so that was the, the extraction what we could do is add a cone element so I would add mesh a cone element so that allows me to show you what we can do first off I will bring him here and now I will scale my element so to scale it in all direction or almost all direction you could do that right so for now, I will not touch that too much, but I will handle my cone in both this direction. Flatten it a bit, right? And I think here it's nice. The second step is I want to rotate it. So for that, I will bring him like this. And the third step is to move him exactly where I want him to be. So, and of course, um, if you want to, to set some kind of uh, color to this um, to this uh, mesh what you can do directly is you go into the mesh you create a new element and you give it a base color for example uh, flashy green let's look at how the scene would look if i were to be here 
this looks pretty amazing, right? So there is one thing is this line goes behind the wall and it's still in front of it. So if you would like to have this occlusion uh, depth cooling, so you need to go so you need to go in your editor panel. So here, right? You go down to the view layers. So you're there, you go down to view layers, use for rendering, that's okay. And in the passes, the data, you enable the Z. It's okay that for now it doesn't um, show here, but when you will do a rendering, you will get it. And to do a rendering, there is one last step, is to actually adjust the position of your camera. So in your element, you had also a camera, which for now is already nicely placed. But if it's not the case, you can go at any position of your uh, choosing. So for example, I could go, uh, oh, sorry, I will, I will go, for example, uh, here, oops. Yes, I think it's very good. Uh, or the opposite direction, this way, right? And if you like the view, you press Control Alt Zero, and it will create this uh, view position. And now everything is set up. So if you go into Render, Render Image, then you will see that the image will start to render with cycles, and you have a pretty amazing image. Close it for now. You just go into um, your uh, rendering engine. If you do not have cycles enabled, of course, you will not get uh, what I have here. So you need to make sure you use cycles, which is the rendering we, we use and the time limit set it to 30 seconds so that it will not get too long before generating the image because we have a lot of points here, as you can see, 16 million little points to handle. So that's it, guys. Um, that's how you create or generate a very nice story map. The next stage is using all the different various uh, little point cloud that I gave you so that you actually can pinpoint and get exactly the result that I showed. To do that, um, just follow up the tutorial that is um, uh, linked below. The data is there. Um, the article is there as well if you want to, to learn it offline. So it's up to you to do uh, what you do best with all of this new found technology. Awesome, so that was uh, magnificent. We demystified um, the process of integrating and using Point Cloud directly within Blender. And as you can see, you can already create amazing renderings, play with that to extract some kind of reports, to make some routing scenarios, as we did uh, in this specific episode. Of course, there is a lot of other stuff to explore, and I intend to do just that. I wanted to have something which is condensed enough so that you can make it in one go. The next stage will be how you can actually animate um, your point cloud, uh, what kind of um, specific physics you can give to your point element, and how you can best use cycles for uh, creating amazing um, rendering. Alright, so that's it for today guys, I really hope that you got some value from this um, video. I will try to push out some new stuff in the coming weeks. So keep posted and to not forget to subscribe that helps me a lot see you in the next video bye bye